You're listening to Let's Talk Creation, the science podcast that's just for you. I thought we could probably start by thinking about the differences that we see between uh, modern humans and modern apes. That might be a good place to kind of launch into all of this, because I think, you know, if if we if we look at, say, a, a chimpanzee or a gorilla, I think intuitively we can see that there are some significant differences between, you know, those things and us. I mean, there is there are obviously similarities uh, there. There are resemblances, but also there's a pretty clear uh, discontinuity between pretty us vast. and them. So t- tell us about what yeah. some of those differences are, Todd, and we'll launch into it from there. So hmm. I have here your basic uh, modern human skull. And if you're listening on on uh, your phone or whatever, sorry, this is going to be visually rich. You may want to park it in front of YouTube at some point. And check this out. Uh, but I will try to audio, uh, you know, describe this um, verbally as we go so you're not totally lost. So what I have here is a plastic model of a modern human skull, sort of a typical skull. Um, And it has some fairly obvious characteristics that that sort of mark it off as different from uh, other things like chimpanzees or gorillas. Um, One, obviously, would be the the teeth are all pretty, pretty much the same size. If you get into the details, there's different shapes, but... It's nothing like the differences between the teeth of of a chimpanzee. We'll look at that here in a second. Um, Another thing that you might notice here is this this massive head. Uh, This is, in a very real sense, the defining thing about human beings is we have this gigantic massive brain that sort of makes the skull really bulgy. Um, When you look at animal skulls the the brain cavity the brain opening tends to be much smaller Mm. proportional to the face proportional to the rest of the skull but here our brain is just this super bulgy thing it gives us this this uh, this gives us this this massively high forehead right so Mm. big giant forehead um that that animals that we don't see in animals the the brain pushes all the way forward to the eye sockets so that the forehead is pretty much flat. If you just start at the top of your eyes, you just go right up into your forehead. It's just flat as a pancake, relatively speaking. Uh, you also notice a couple of other features here that are a little more subtle. This part of the this part of the jawbone here, which is sort of right. If you sort of put your finger in the middle of your bottom lip and you sort of move down, you will notice that your jawbone sort of sticks out at that point. Technically, we call that the chin. Uh, it is a feature of, of human skulls that tends to be different from other things. Another feature that we have here, if we look at the bottom of this uh, skull model, you'll notice there is a big hole right here, which was named a very long time ago uh, foramen magnum which is latin for big hole so there's a big hole down here on the bottom of the skull now what's interesting about that is that it it's it's sort of it's hard to notice this exactly but it's pushed forward with respect to other animals animals that run around on on their four four legs tend to have the opening of the foramen magnum back here or pushed farther back um, and that's because, of course, their their neck is coming in this way, and they want to be able to see where they're going, so they want to be able to have their face facing where they're going. Uh, whereas we, of course, walk around on two legs, and so we have a frame and magnum that's pushed forward so that our heads sit on the top of our backbones so we can face the direction that we're moving. Yeah, very makes handily. sense. Yeah, it, it does. <clears throat> it all makes sense. 
Although yeah. the chin here is a little bit of a puzzle. We're not real sure what the chin is all about. The chin may simply be something to do with the way the, skull, the, the jaw bone actually grows uh, during our development. But why, you know, what advantage there is to having the bottom of our of our chins point outward is not clear. So that we sort of have this this concave aspect to our to our faces. Mm. Kind of funny. Anyway, so this is not, you know, this kind of frame and magnum here, this is not I mean, this isn't a slam dunk obvious evidence of, of walking around on two legs, but it's certainly would be something that you would look at and go, yeah, that's that's associated with creatures that walk around habitually on two legs rather than four. Now, I mentioned, you know, we, we, <laughs> you start with the human skull. It's kind of weird because I'm pointing out things that are different from animal skulls. Maybe I should have started with the chimpanzee. I don't know. But here is a model of a chimpanzee skull. And so now you can start, I think, to see some of those pronounced differences between this this thing and the human skull that I was just referring to. So yeah. one thing that you notice right away, uh, this guy has a massive face compared mm. to his brain cavity, right? The brain cavity is much smaller. It slopes back from the eye socket. There's pretty much no forehead here at all, almost. Um, it's just uh, the the this brow ridge, so the, the actual eye sockets, because the brain cavity is small here, there you can see that if I hold it up like that, you can see the eyes bulge out much farther. Yeah. Uh, the skull's aside. kind of pinched in. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of pinched in right behind the, yeah. right behind the eye sockets. Um, because the brain is small and the brain cavity is, is appropriately smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, you also notice another thing here that's really obvious, those teeth, right? Uh, in our mouths, just sort of glancing at them, and the teeth are all roughly the same. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they're all similarly sized, and they don't have, you know, we don't have any teeth that jut out like fangs here. Mm -hmm. But in this, in this um, chimpanzee skull here, obviously really big canines, uh, and markedly different teeth in different parts of the of the jaw. Hmm. So those are some differences. Also, you'll see here that the chimpanzee's mouth, basically the 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 point at which it juts out the most is where the teeth meet, not at the bottom of the jawbone, right? So ours, we have that jawbone that has that 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 part that sticks out right in the front, underneath the front teeth, um, his jawbone slopes right back. Mm. Uh, so there's no chin, right? And then we look underneath of it. And so we're in a human being, a modern human, the, the, the frame and magnum here, the big hole is pushed forward. Here it's pushed backward. And of course, the reason being that it's... Uh, chimpanzee habitually walks around on four legs and so its back is actually sloped uh, most of the time and the chimpanzee needs to be able to see where it's going keep its face forward so it's going to not have the uh, not have it sitting on the top right so pushing the frame and magnum forward would make it constantly be staring at the ground which some people do um, but instead it's looking out where it's going which makes sense so that's the modern condition. Qu yeah. Quite a quite a difference between modern living human beings mm. and modern apes. You've been listening to Todd and Paul Talk Creation. If you'd like more information about any of the subjects discussed in the show, please visit us at coresci.org slash podcast. That's coresci.org slash podcast. If you'd like more information on sponsorship opportunities, or maybe you'd like to have a product or book reviewed or discussed on our podcast, please contact us at podcast at That's podcast at